Hey guys, we're in Philadelphia. Lots of cool stuff to look at around here and I'm just outside the Expo Center from the e-bike expo that's in town right now. I'm looking at the Schwinn Monroe 250. This is their cheapest electric bike, $11.99. Not too bad, but you do make some trade-offs here. So for example, we've got these linear pull brakes with traditional rubber pads, big four finger levers, mechanical. I do love that they have motor inhibitors because you know this is using, again, a more basic, kind of old school 12 magnet cadence sensor. So it, there's little magnets on that disc, pass a little sensor right over here. And that's what tells the motor to start or stop. It doesn't give nearly as much signal about how much power to give you, how quickly, whether you're slowing down. And that's back to these brake levers, telling the bike to kind of ease off, especially because you're, you're dealing with rim brakes. We've got these nice machine sidewalls on these deep dish rims, color match. So we got some red accents on the frame and on the saddle. It's an interesting bike at about 42 and a half pounds. It reminds me of the Easy Motion Easy Go Race because it's a single speed, 46 tooth chain ring, 18 tooth sprocket in the rear. We got that horizontal dropout. So you wanna make sure that that chain is tight. You're not gonna have bouncing or dropping. There's no chain protector. There's no guide or anything like that. But again, with only one sprocket, the chain is really straight. You shouldn't have a problem with it coming off. And the type of riding you're gonna be doing with these a little bit narrower, more efficient tires is probably just around the city. You're not gonna to wanna to, you know, go too much off-road or bumpy. And the max assisted speed on this is about 20 miles per hour. So, you know, that's something that I think about when, when I'm looking at the tires. Like, how is this gonna feel? It's an all aluminum frame with a steel fork. That's gonna give you some vibration dampening. A Little bit raked out here for stability. Overall, a little bit shorter than I thought, about 71 inches. This is the size large. It does come in small, medium, and large, so you can get the right fit. And again, at that just about $1,200 price point for an electric bike, not bad. But what are some of the other trade-offs? We've got a 250 watt internally geared eight fun hub motor, okay, versus 350 on a lot of bikes these days or a mid drive. So, you know, climbing and stuff, especially with only one gear, that's okay. But hub motors aren't quite as efficient or well balanced as mid drives. You're not gonna have like the drivetrain wear that you might, but then if you get any damage to this rear wheel, it's specially spoked and everything, right? So another thing I noticed is 14 gauge spokes up front, 13 in the rear, a little bit thicker. I like that they're black, they match the motor. And again, just the color here, we've got some nice reflective sidewalls on those tires. These are 700 by 32, so a little bit narrower, <laughs> coming back to that comfort thing. I think it was like 80 PSI, you know, they're supposed to be run a little bit harder. This is about efficiency. Even if the battery runs out, it's not gonna be very difficult to pedal this thing or to coast, but there are some trade-offs there, comfort-wise. Someone like me with a sensitive neck and back, I guess I kind of think about that. Like, what's it gonna be like, even going over these cracks and stuff at 20 miles per hour? This is a more active bike, and look at that stem. It's like 105 millimeters long, and they've got it flipped right now. I think it's a seven degree angle. I would probably flip it up, and I would definitely keep these four spacers there just to keep it up, because I'm, I'm more of an upright type of rider. But for someone who's aggressive, leaning forward, this can become almost like a road bike, a little bit racier. We've got these ribbed rubber grips. I already talked about the brakes. Cockpit's pretty clean up here. This is a 25.4 millimeter, so it's, it's the kind of narrower bar. And this is a steel bar as well. So we do have a steel fork, steel handlebar, vibration dampening, those rubber grips, not locking or anything, but they've got the little end cap so you, you, you don't rub your fingers up against the, the brake levers. And again, mechanical brakes. So, you know, a little bit more hand power. It's simplicity. And even the frame here, this is the diamond frame, gonna be easier to hang off of a car, lock to a rack. I love that they got bottle cage bosses here and rear rack mounts, potentially. I didn't see this little tab on the other side, only on the right side. And then we've got some potentially fender mounts or maybe a front rack. No quick release, it's like a 10 millimeter axle, threaded axle up front. And it looked like a 12 millimeter in the back. You can see that the power cable is protruding right here from the right side of that axle. Um, and it, maybe this cup's been bumped a little bit. This is something you wanna be careful with if the bike gets laid down. There's no kickstand on it. Or if you're riding really close to something and it gets snagged or, you know, you, you don't want this to get damaged because then your motor's done. There's, there's not really a great way to fix that. So it's a little bit of vulnerability, but not too bad. I've seen ones that protrude like directly out. This one, at least it's at an angle. Quick disconnect right here so you can deal with any kind of service, maybe completely take off the wheel, fix the tire, change the tire, maybe the tube or something like that. And then the battery pack, 36 volts, 11.6 amp hours. This is one of the areas where it's different than like the easy go race. That one, it's 250 watt hub motor. It looks a little bit smaller physically. So I feel like this is, you know, it's rated at 250. They have a very similar Monroe 350 
that does have disc brakes, costs a little bit more, but then you get higher motor power. It's gonna weigh a little bit more. I'm gonna review that one separately. So just coming back to the trade-offs here, this one's all about how cheap can we get it? And I think it's nice that at least they kept the battery pack a little bit higher capacity. This weighs about 5.6 pounds. I took it off the bike earlier. It's got the little LED power level indicator built right in and a charging port right here. The plug is not my favorite. It's, it's just kind of a little plasticky thing. You can see the charger over here. Two amps, that's about average. It's not gonna be super fast, but the battery's kind of average capacity anyway. 1.3 pounds on this, this battery charger. So, you know, fairly portable, put it in a backpack or something. And then here are the keys. Because there's no kickstand, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I wanna take the battery off because I don't wanna knock the bike over, but you insert and then the, the battery slides out to the side, which is nice. That allows on some of the other Schwinn bikes for them to have a lower top tube. Of course, in this case, you get the strength and that classic style of a high step. Just keep in mind, if you're someone who has like hip or, or knee sensitivity, you really gotta like lift your leg up to get on this bike. So it's, it's definitely going for that like younger sporty city type of person. And then being able to park at a rack and feel like it's pretty tough, take that battery with you so it doesn't experience like rain, uh, extreme heat, extreme cold, because that is a little bit harder on lithium ion cells, which are in there. They, they are supposed to last pretty well, uh, you know, up to like a thousand charge cycles and still have 20 or 70% of their capacity remaining. The, the warranty on this bike's about two years comprehensive and then even more on the frame might even be like lifetime on the frame and fork. Schwinn's been around for a long time. It's a well-recognized kind of nostalgia brand, but I feel like it's part of this big conglomerate now where, you know, their, their bikes are just a little bit cheaper. And in fact, this one sold predominantly like online on Amazon or something like that. So you might have to do some assembly and set up yourself when you get it. Again, you're saving money, but you don't get the support of like a shop if you do have issues. Even their website, I tried to go and get some details on this bike while I was studying it for the review. And the website, it was just like electric bikes and it had like some pictures, but you couldn't click them. There was like no more information. So I got a picture of the catalog um, and the catalog was also very basic. So hopefully, you know, I studied this a lot and I got like all the measurements I could for you. I only have the large frame here, but maybe that gives you a reference point if you get this and you want to upgrade something or know how wide the, the hub spacing is or something like that. That's all back at the site. I do really like the pedals they chose, I don't see a name brand, but they kind of remind me of the Welgo or VP ones. They're aluminum alloy platform, good traction, good surface area, great power transfer because this bike is so stiff. Uh, the saddle, I like that it matches and stuff, but it's it's a little bit more firm, just coming back to like the whole, like, you know, efficient, cheap, kind of simple approach of this bike. So I think that's a that's a great, um, a great overview. I'm gonna pack this stuff up and go for a little ride. Okay. So to turn this thing on, you just hold the power button for a couple seconds. We've got these bright blue LEDs. We're in pretty, you know, middle of the day, relatively bright. It's a little bit overcast, but I can still see those blue LEDs nicely right now. At night, I have seen these inside the conference center and they're just super bright. So I might keep a piece of like painter's tape or whatever and just cover those sometimes because it could, it could really be a little bit distracting. Plenty of room for a phone mount or whatever else. The display's super simple. It's got assist level on the left. You can go all the way down to none and ride it like a bike, or you can go up to five. And that's where I've been experimenting the most, like on my test rides, because it's just not that powerful. And again, there's a little bit of delay because it's using a basic cadence sensor. Over here, we've got five ticks for the battery, 20% increments, and that's it. So, you know, if you're on that last tick, do you have 20%? You have zero percent you can't really tell it's not very precise there's also no speedometer built in so you can't tell how close you are to 20 miles per hour you can't tell how far you've gone there's just you know it leaves something to be desired now that we have fancy electric bikes with like lcd displays and stuff but again those those tend to cost more than this and this is a little bit more it's less flashy it might be more reserved and people might not notice it at the bike rack as much and, and target it um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the leg lift here, Whoop, way over. <laughs> I'm probably more of a medium sized frame guy myself and I'm just gonna start pedaling. It's pretty quiet. I'm not hearing a whole lot of zip and I'm also not feeling it a lot at those lower speeds. You know, it's, it takes a minute, it's a slow cadence.
there we go. You know, you get some idea that at the higher speeds, the pedal cadence feels more natural. You can hear the motor zipping a little bit, but it's it's not it's not too bad. It's aside from the big battery pack, it's it's kind of stealthy. You know, it's sleek in that sense. And here, I'm, this time, I'm going to try to pedal and show you the cadence sensor starting and stopping. It's hard to tell because you can't really hear it, but there's a bit of a delay. It just kind of waits for a second. And so that's where these, these motor inhibitor levers come in. If I'm even just barely squeezing, the motor doesn't kick on at all. So that's a good safety feature, especially for people who might want to track stand at a light. You know, you're trying to balance the bike like this and kind of pushing against the pedals a little bit. You want to hold that brake lever so you don't accidentally kick onto that cadence sensor. It's more relevant when you're dealing with a torque sensor. But again, this is just sort of basic. And one of the feedback points I've gotten from some shops about uh, you know diagnosing issues with bikes like this is that, that that disc, plastic disc, can get bumped a little bit out of place and, and then the sensor can be a little bit inconsistent. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure that you're, you're tight back here on those bolts, that your chain's not, not too loose, um, and that the tire pressure's high. These are using Presta valves. It's the little silver one. And these are also, it looks like, deep dish specific valves so they can they can go all the way through since the rims are a little bit deeper here you can see that 46 tooth chain ring 18 tooth sprocket maybe you can hear the motor a little bit better because you're connected to the seat post which by the way is 27.2 so you could replace that with a suspension post if you're someone who wants that extra comfort anyway just some idea of the sound and you know how, how it performs as we're riding along Not bad. And you can pedal backwards on this one, by the way. It's not a fixie. John, right? Yeah, John. Yeah, we were just walking around with your stroller, getting ready to head into the expo. <laughs> and I was like, you want to try? You know, give, give it some feedback. You, you want to take off and I'll... Definitely. We'll, we'll chat in a minute. We'll get your thoughts. Good. Sweet. Here he goes. Looking pretty good. There we go. Thoughts? Smooth. Really yeah. smooth. Uh, you barely feel it, and once it's there, it's there. Okay. So it's really, really smooth. I forgot to tell you, it's a single speed. Were you okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. You said, so you're a police officer? Yeah. And you ride a bike sometimes? For... A lot. Okay, yeah, so you know you know your way around a bike. On them, yeah. We were talking earlier about a Trek bike that you tried with a mid-drive. How yeah. would you compare this? This is a hub motor. Uh, this one seemed like it uh, It was a bit smoother. I felt like uh, it, the the other one was like you got the power a lot, a lot faster. And you're like, Whoa. Like kind of zippy and this yeah. one's a little more subtle? Yeah. I think for maybe a newer rider, this would be a little bit better because you're not getting that kind of jolt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Did it feel like, I mean, we don't have any, any hills nearby to test ride, but did it feel like it would help you up a, a hill a little oh, bit? Oh, definitely, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Sweet. Any other thoughts? It's your chance. Um, I don't know. I like it. You like it. Okay, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. It's it's nice to get that third person perspective too when someone's out there on a ride and you know, we were talking about like, hey, you want to use the helmet? And he's like, yeah, we're here in the courtyard. <laughs> um, pretty safe area. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate yeah, no you problem. saying hey. Anytime. Sweet. Have fun at the expo. Thanks, buddy.
I think that's about it. That's the Schwinn Monroe 250. For the full write-up on this, with all those specs, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there, ride safe. Chime in with any questions or comments you might have. Cheers.